Hello YouTube, Bowtide Media here, and today I've got a brand new series type thing, something I might come back to uh, fairly often. We'll see how much you guys enjoy it. I think you will. There's a ton of traction on the comments. So this is Hot Takes with Bowtide Media. Episode one is going to be talking about Monster Cat. Specifically, I asked you guys, the community, about uh, hot takes that you have in the Monster Cat community about songs, artists, anything really. And uh, I will uh, talk about them and react to them here. Uh, and if some of you are like, hey, this is just a ripoff of Anthony Fantano's Let's Argue. Uh, and to that, I would say, um, yes, it is. Marshmallow was the best thing to happen to Monster Cat and I wish he could come back. I know it isn't gonna happen, but I want it to. I don't know about the best thing that could have ever happened to Monster Cat. I don't know if that's necessarily true. Um, I think he did a lot of good in just terms of getting more recognition for the label as a whole and he was the first to go platinum. Uh, but I don't think he did, I don't think he, you would say the, he's the best thing for Monster Cat. He came, did one song, a remix EP and was gone. So uh, this take is meh. Monster Cat focuses too much on name recognitions for their signing sometimes. The Pit, for example, was only signed because Boss Fight made it. Bro Step barely gets signed anymore, which I think is a good thing, but then they make exceptions for fan favorites, which is wrong in my opinion. Wow, I uh, this is definitely a spicy take because I've, I very much disagree with this. Um, for those of you that have been around like old school Monster Cat stuff, their whole thing was that they were giving the voice to the more smaller artists and they aren't signing these big names. They're not, they're not like, in the grand scheme of things, these EDM artists that they're signing aren't big. Marshmallow was the only one and that was before he was as big as he is now. Also, Boss Fight isn't like the biggest name you could think of. Like his stuff isn't like crazy popular. He's not, he's by far not the most popular Monster Cat artist. And with that last sentiment about uh, only signing fan favorites or making exceptions for fan favorites, I don't think that's true. I think there's just been such a good community around Monster Cat that the, people just want to come back. Artists want to come back as often. You're seeing people like Grant put stuff on uh, Proximity recently. You've seen a whole bunch of other artists. I think Tokyo Machine did a NCS or something like that recently. Um, they're, they're going to other labels. They're not just staying on Monster Cat. So I, I, I disagree with this heavily. Out of all the genres Stone Bank has done, it's a shame that he hasn't made a hyper pop song yet. I I would be shocked if Stonebank made a hyperpop song. Um, I think hyperpop is hot booty garbage and I hope he does not. I feel like Monster Cat just needs a lot more recognition, especially Instinct, because they release and have released some of my favorite songs. Yes, they do have recognition now, but I just want them to have more. This is the classic trope of always wanting your favorite things to have more recognition. And so I wouldn't say this is a hot take at all, really. Uh, I think in the grand scheme of things, Monster Cat is actually quite popular in terms of labels. They're by far have the biggest, I think, fan base following a specific label. Like, when have you ever heard of anyone really following labels other than in this specific EDM kind of area of like Disciple, uh, Never Say Die, Ophelia, Monster Cat, like you don't hear people following, like they don't follow Atlantic Records or follow, I don't even know, the Warner Bros. Like that's not a thing. I think the kind of family aspect of Monster Cat would be bigger if artists wouldn't get signed for single releases, but over a period of time, like on other labels. This is a very interesting thing. And this is, I think, part of the ideology of why Monster Cat even existed. And I honestly have loved the format that they have done in the past of just signing per song. I think it works really well. It creates, I actually think it does a better job of including a family aspect because you're not necessarily tied down and people that are going to have a lot of releases on Monster Cat are going to stay at Monster Cat for as long as they want to. So I don't think the family is maybe as big as it could be. I think your family is stronger and better because of this. Nitrofun's new music, Warp Zone, Addicted System Failure, is leagues better than his old stuff. It's only looked back at fondly for nostalgia. Uh, no. I, not at all. I think there's a lot of people that will disagree with this. The whole boat community, we voted on a few of these songs already. Um, no. I, <laughs> it, is, it is no way better, I think. I, I literally listened to, I think it was Warp Zone, and then immediately played New Game after, and I was like, New Game is just so much better. Like, even, it holds up way better today. Instinct is underrated, Silk is underappreciated. Both need more love. I think Instinct and Silk will both forever be less popular than Uncaged, just because that's the nature of the music genre that they encompass. And I think that makes a lot of sense. Uncaged, the heavier stuff, has more popularity than the kind of poppier future-based stuff, which is, again, more popular than the really chill progressive house stuff. So I think 
I don't necessarily think it's underrated and or underappreciated. Their release schedule is interesting. What I, I don't. What does that even mean? What is why? What's interesting about it? You have what? You got Uncaged Monday, Instinct Tuesday, Silk on Wednesday, Uncaged Thursday, uh, Silk and Instinct on Friday. That's what you're getting six songs a week at a, or five songs a week. Six songs. My brain. I I don't really know what's interesting about this. I kn I know a lot of music generally comes out on Friday, but I don't know why is this interesting. Monster Cat doesn't feel the same without Tristam. I do and I don't disagree with this. I mean, yes, Tristam just had this sense of awe and wonder to him whenever he would release and the secrecy behind the fabled album that eventually came off label. Um, I do have to agree with this a little bit, I think. Just when you have such a, a strong front runner for the label kind of identity as Tristam and Tristam and Bracken were because of the numerous successful songs that they've created for the label, I, I I do have to agree, it doesn't really feel the same. There are, I think, a few artists like that on Monster Cat where if they stopped releasing, it would just feel different. Like if Pegboard Nerds stopped releasing on Monster Cat or Stone Bank, like that just feels different. It, it's not normal. Hot VIP is a good song because it's just a fun track. You could tell that Fowler really had a good time making it and it reflects in the track, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, the original is definitely leagues better, but I mean, this is just... These opinions on individual songs, I don't think are as spicy as they could be because it's just like, obviously this is your opinion. That's what you said at the very end. And so I, I don't think this is a crazy out there take. And I agree that I think Fowler had a lot more fun making it, but I don't think having fun making the song makes it a better song. Eptic has never released a bad song and Monster Cat and Propane is by far my favorite. That is a that is a hot take. Now none of them are bad songs. You must be like a super epic epic fanboy to like not think that any of the stuff is trash. But I mean, uh, you do you. Vicetone's LP was overly hated. It was Vicetone being themselves. What else do you need? I mean, just because they were being themselves with something doesn't necessarily make it good. If you're yourself making the trash music, it doesn't make it good just because you were being yourself. Instinct Mazare is better than Uncaged Mazare. Sure, Berserker, Vagrant, etc. are good, but his light-hearted DNB stuff is far more appealing. I'm gonna have to hard disagree with you on this one. I didn't actually like his Instinct stuff as much, and I think his Uncaged fits more of his niche and his style. I think when he goes absolutely hard, I think that's Mazare at his finest. Feel It Coming and Bro Step Strikes Back are legitimate, unironic bangers. I actually like Bro Step Strikes Back, and I kind of like feel it coming, so I, I get it a little bit actually. I'm I'm sorry, other, everyone else. When it comes to house songs that release on Monster Cat these days, they're either really good and unique or really, really uninteresting with no in-between. Um, I'm gonna have to generally agree with this one actually. I think the house tracks are like, I agree with that. Stuff I just not loving, like VHS by Tony Romero just like was just felt really, really uninspiring. 29 was by a mile the best numerical comp. Uh, I, well, I mean, I disagree with that. I think my favorite is 23 or 25. Uh, to me, the golden age of Monster Cat is in between that like 19 to 25 range. Um, but I, I definitely don't think it was the best. Oh, and speaking of which, the past few years have been better than the traditional golden age that people reference. Uh, oh, exactly 20, 19 to 25 ish. Um, no, I, I believe you're wrong. That's it's called the golden age for a reason. I ultimately think that Monster Cat's MO is just changed over the years and it's morphed into something different. They're no longer the kind of they were, they're no longer the Monster Cat they were in 2014, 2015, and their whole idea and ideology behind why they are, why they exist as a label has changed. So I think they're, these new releases nowadays in 2021, I think they reflect that more so than they did back in 2014. There has never been a bad album or LP released on the label. All of them have been incredible. Uh, Vice Tone? Always in a Nightmare, Who I Am, Harpoon, and Both Evil Insides are dreadful songs. Wow, I mean, I agree with uh, with Evil Insides. I hate those songs, but really, Always in a Nightmare, Who I Am, and Harpoon? I mean, Harpoon's kind of meh, I think, generally. But uh, really, Always in a Nightmare and Who I Am? The last really good Pegboard Nerds release was Oscar slash Steel when the Full Hearts EP came out. Um, I actually agree with this one. Um, I made a post a little bit ago saying that I think um, 
Penguin Nerd's golden age of their own stuff was the Pink Cloud to Full Hearts EP, and I think everything before and after have just been kind of underwhelming. Okay, I've seen this one a few times, uh, but Connor's Future Base era was better than his album Level Days and or his newer style of music. And uh, I would have agreed with you before Memory Bank, actually. Uh, I actually really enjoyed Therapy a fair amount, but I did like his Future Base stuff better. But if he's gonna take a route more towards Memory Bank for the kind of rest of his, uh, I guess, stay for the next little bit. Who knows what I'm, I'm even saying here. Uh, I, I really like Memory Bank. Puppet has like three good songs in the label and the rest aren't that good. Wow, that is a bold claim. Puppet is, I think, probably one of my top five artists on the label. Uh, that is that is bold. Both Glacier and Ellis's 2020 EPs were overrated. Glacial was just meh throughout and you know, it's sad when the intro is the best part of the EP. Um, no, those were... I think generally a lot of people will agree that those were the two best EPs of 2020. And I think I have a lot of people to back me up on that. Not sure if this is a hot take or not, but the 2011 Christmas album is mostly a hidden gem aside from Jingle Bells. Um, as someone that's listened to every single Monster Cat song and has actually a Christmas playlist of EDM stuff, I didn't put these songs in because I think they're hot booty trash. So uh, I disagree with this. The Silk acquisition seems kind of pointless in my opinion. There hasn't been any standout songs recently and it feels like a, or, and it's a complete snooze fest. Um, I, I sort of agree. I understand from a business standpoint why they did it. And I think it's a smart move for the label as a whole, but I agree. I think it's kind of been a snooze fest for the last little bit. Uh, I think Solarwind was the really the only one. Oh, that one and, um, uh, oh, the, the Synthwave one. Uh, I can't remember, Night something? Uh, the rest of it just has been like, ah, I just don't care for it. Most garage tracks on Monster Cat are incredibly unappealing. Uh, I'm not sure this is really a hot take because uh, I, I don't think you like garage, buddy. Sack Squatch is sort of just a meme. Yeah, I agree. I think him and Half and Orange are just becoming just a meme as of late. I don't like really anything they're putting out. Riot's album outside of Overkill and Take That was not good. Um, how can you like love Overkill and not love like a, a Jungle Fury or Blackwater? They're like fairly similar tracks. So I don't know how you can like enjoy Overkill and not like the other ones. Uh, to me, that doesn't line up as, as, as much. Justin O's album in brackets, it's, it is an album. Why is that in brackets? Why is it in quotations? Is the worst on the label without any question. No, that, that is like, I love that one. That's actually one of my favorites. The, uh, the whole story of it being a George Orwellian kind of uh, journey through the sounds and the music videos all lined up to tell a story. I thought it was brilliant. Better by Nonsense is the worst song on the label. Wow. You're just gonna say that that one song is the worst compared to the years and years of music of early EDM stuff that does not hold up today. You're gonna say that is worse than Obsession by Nelio? Your sweet voice through the duct tape was probably and I love you. I love you too, always and forever. Ooh, I don't know about that. Eric Hord still has good music despite how much of a trash human being he is. Oh yeah, I'm gonna talk about Aerocord here. Um, so it's really interesting to see kind of the community talk about uh, the separating the artist from the music. Does Aerocord's actions uh, depict how I should appreciate the music or like the music or hate the music? And I'm not sure where I necessarily stand on it. Uh, I don't listen to Aerocord anymore. I've unliked all the songs, removed them from all the playlists. Uh, but if a song comes on of his, I'm not gonna skip it. I, I do very much believe he is a trash human being and I think what he did was awful, uh, but I don't know, it, it, it's a weird balance and I think it's just for everyone to decide on their own if they really want to listen to his music or not. Tokyo Machine is overrated. I, I don't know how I feel about that. At the beginning, I thought he maybe would have been a little overrated on his first couple songs, but over time, he's really refined his style and I, I wouldn't say he's that overrated. Grant is the most overrated artist on the label. I. I personally very much disagree with this. I think Grant is my favorite artist on the label. <laughs> and another one, Cloud Nun is one of the most overrated artists on the label. He only has two good tracks, Juliet and Promises, which is really just a Miser track with Cloud Nun vocals. Also, Nun Trick Pony sucks. I mean, I just don't think you like that kind of music then, buddy. You just don't like Cloud Nun that much. Silk should have just folded into Instinct because they overlap so much. Um, I, I really don't think they overlap so much. 
Uh, I don't think there are really any songs that sound as much like Instinct does. Um, I... Yeah, I actually, I really don't agree with this one at all. Um, I, there were, there are actually no songs. I've listened to all of the Silk songs since they've uh, been acquired by Monster Cat. And I wouldn't say any of them were instinct worthy. I don't say worthy, but like instinct a bowl, if that makes sense. Um, if they were to have been on instinct, I would have been like, this is weird. Um, but ironically, Solar Wind uh, did sound like it would have been uncaged. So I think it would have been more uncaged overlap than instinct. I think just because both are not heavy EDM music, you're kind of saying this, but I mean, I think you need to th think about it a little more critically. Well, that has been it for Hot Takes with Bowtide Media. Uh, talking about Monster Cat today. Uh, if you ever want to be a part of these, comment or follow me on Twitter uh, and or you can see it in the YouTube community tab on my channel or it'll show up on your homepage or something like that when I want to do more videos like this. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about these hot takes. Were they really hot? Were they not? Were they cold and kind of boring takes? But uh, yeah, I've been Bowtie Media and I will see you guys in another video.